All right, take one part two of triforcing slash damage routing. Now that we've talked about how damage flows and the different types of damage that weapons do, how do we build a bot that can take all three modes of damage? So direct damage and splash damage from plasma and rail damage. So how do you build a bot that is uh, health efficient against all those different things? So there's a few different things you can do to make your bots a little bit more robust. There's um, split protection, which is if you have a long bot um, from end to end, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a couple of rods in there just traveling from end to end so that when damage comes in and it splits your bot in half, the front and the back of your bot are still connected to one another. And rods are good for this because you can wrap them, as previously discussed. And this just makes it so that once these blocks have been shot out, you no longer can shoot from here to here on the rod. All right, so what about functional components? Well, there's a few different things you can do for functional components. Um, a lot of people will usually just have some sort of rod-mounted weapon or just rod forcing, which we talked about before and why that's maybe not a very good idea, which is basically where you have a rod and then you have a functional component on top of it, and then you cover the rod up and the bottom of the rod down here is in the middle of your bot and the top of the rod here is up where the damage is or it would be going out to the front. So the problem with this is that if the bottom block gets removed, then it separates your gun or whatever it is from the rest of your robot. So that's it's fine as long as you don't take any plasma damage or get railed somewhere where it might break off those connections early. So the next thing that we can do, which is a very popular technique amongst builders, is you can dual mount something. And what this basically means is you're taking a functional component and you're basically making a connection to two different points in your robot which then terminate at a single point point. and ideally you'd want these to be in two very different places so for instance this isn't a great idea because our um, two connection points are only three blocks away from one another right so both of these can get destroyed fairly easy now we can make this path longer by having some sort of routing in here right but the reason why this is so powerful is because so that I'm using blocks instead of rods. And this is important because when we have a medium of blocks that it's connected to, so if there's brick spam all around this, and this is a two-dimensional example, I'll move on to 3D later. What this means when you have a, a, a line length like this is that damage, even if damage lands exactly on the entrance right here, it still has to go one two, three steps of damage in before it reaches your critical mount. What that means is it's also flowing three steps outside of that, right? Well, here it wouldn't be. Let's make this block spam for, for now, just so I can illustrate. Right, so here, and then here. Now, if this was a three-dimensional medium, then what you end up with is you end up with the amount of, so the steps from here to here and here to here are the same. And this is, if you have it in a bot, three-dimensional, right? So what's happening is your damage on your bot side is being soaked at a rate of r cubed or r squared, even if it's flat, right? And so every step of this, it's taking exponentially more and more health till eventually that will get soaked up, right? That's a huge chunk of your bot that has to get taken out before this mount gets taken out. And once that's all removed, um, you still have another line holding your bot up, right? Now, ideally, you want to try to separate these as much as possible, because if you lose both of them, you lose your mount. So what we would probably want to do is we'd probably want to take this one, and we'd probably want to attach it here, or, you know, if this were a three-dimension... So now there's much more space, right? So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you're never going to have both of those get destroyed. Um, unless you both parts of your bot are gone, in which case you no longer need that functional component. It's It's been held up as long as it can possibly be held up for. Um, if this were three-dimensional, you might want to, you know, snake it somewhere else. Um, it's good to mix heights and uh, 
distances. So the reason why we don't use a rod, as discussed, so there's a few do's and don'ts about this. There's a right and wrong way to do this. Um, rods, if you use them, you'll run into the issue of... Right, so say, so why, why not a rod? Why not just have a rod here, Rubicon? Well, the problem is that's only one tick of damage flow. So it's going to go one, two, three, right? So that's bad. Don't do that. Because now it only has to travel one, two. You're not sinking as much on the other end. So blocks are ideal for this. Now, you still can use rods. So how can we maybe perhaps rod mount something and incorporate a dual mount into the rod mount at the same time? Well, okay, so let's say I have a hover. And my hover is right at the nose of my bot. So, you know, this is right in the, in the line of fire. It's like right behind where I expect damage to land. So I want to preserve this as long as possible. Well, what I can do is I can have a block, and then I can have a rod mount, which is wrapped. And then I can have a dual mount. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter where you connect it. Um, I'm just going to go three-dimensional because it's a little easier to do here. Right? And now it's connected to the front. And, you know, you'd, you'd wrap up your hover. So there's the front of your bot. Now, you wouldn't... Now, as something I should mention, um, you really... Ab you absolutely cannot connect anywhere except along where the end of the mount terminates, right? So you do not want to connect here. No, don't do that. Um, you want to force away from it everywhere that it can go. So you'd want to not attach here, here, or here or here, right? So it's completely isolated from the body of your bot except for the two mount lines and where they end. So what this does is this give you, gives you the benefit of a rod mount. Now at the other end this is a different issue because we still have the same issue where it goes one, two, or just basically just one and right to your, your mount. So there's a few different things we can do. We can put line length on the other end here Right, and then this would attach to your body. But the problem is that takes up a lot of volume. Um, what might be better is if you have a single block, just maybe like one, and then have a block here, and then some sort of damage sink here. Um, now, if you want to like have a natural setup, this would be um, another functional component that you don't much care about. Or, I mean, you could technically do a single point damage thing, but say, uh, let's do a good one, something that you can make a part of your body. Let's make, uh, let's make it be a, a strut. So, remember how we talked about how parts um, have, regardless of their geometry, damage will flow into them and it has to consume their health before it goes on to the next step and then it goes somewhere else? So what I'm doing here is when I have a, a damage sink on the input side on the back, so before we were worried about plasma and a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So we were worried that it would break, it would go straight up the line and it would break our hover mount. Now if we don't attach anywhere but to where our single point damage sink is also attached to, now when damage flows into this, before it can travel up the rod, it's sinking into here, right? So it doesn't have to be a strut, it could be anything else. And then another step later, now it's going to all the other places that the strut is attached to, right? Before it can reach our hover. So damage landing on the block, like the, the point right here would have to go one, two, three, right? And now here it would also go one, two, and there would be even one more step. So we're using the extra attachment points here to spread the damage out as much as possible. So all of this has to get used up before that damage can travel into my hover. So now another question is, why don't we make the lines extra thick? Um, I've had this question a lot. Um, so why not have, why not beef our dual mounts up? Why not give them, you know, the massive treatment and just make them big and chunky. Why not, you know, have them like this? Go somewhere and be really thick. Well, the problem is with this is that when you increase your line size like this, or, you know, like make it to put stuff underneath, right? 
don't do this. The because what's you are using the blocks around the dual mount to sink the damage at the ends. When you make your lines extra thick like this, what you're doing is you're increasing the volume of the line, which is that think about it as increasing the chances that it'll actually get hit. The only purpose of that dual mount line is to create um, a, a block distance between, or a tick distance between your connected mount. It's to connect it somewhere and it's to provide a buffer for damage so that three blocks of damage flow in has to be also three blocks of damage flow on the outside of your body even if it's landing on the point here. Um, and if it gets destroyed then you still have the other mount holding it up, right? But if you make lines extra thick like this, what happens is you're running into an issue where you're increasing the volume of it and it's no longer serving its purpose as well because it's more likely to be hit early instead of you getting hit in the body first, right? And when damage lands on one of these lines, what's going to happen is it's going to reach your critical component before it ever gets to any other part of your body where it's sinking damage. You need that extra meat to sync up um, the damage of your body. And this is also one of the tricky things about building with dual mounts is if you do too many of them or if you make them too long, so I mean I ideally maybe you you would want really long lines, right? Because more equals more damage steps to get into your bot, right? Like I have to blow off a whole side of my bot now or or more, like huge, like whole half of my bot has to go away before this mount gets used up, right? Before damage reaches my, my hover. But the problem is, is you're now, the percentage of the volume of your bot that's composed of these lines is very large, right? And you need this block spam on the other side or other material in order to soak up the damage. And if your entire bot's made out of spaghetti, then the only place the damage, like the majority of the percentage of your bot is um, made up of these dual mount lines. And so if you get hit by plasma or rail or something else, it's more likely that these are going to get popped off. So you need to play a delicate balancing game between the total volume of your bot to the total volume of your dual mount lines and also the distance of your dual mount lines, right? So more dual mount lines and longer dual mount lines equals less volume that your dual mounts can use to sink damage. So the nice thing about this is we've combined a rod mount and a hover mount. So I'm going to do a hover example next where I try to actually build a 3D model of how you might want to set one of these up. And that'll be the next segment.